Welcome again to this C sharp course. In this course, we are learning about data types. And in the previous video, we were learning about the integer data types. But it is not always the case to work only with the integer numbers. In any project, there will always be a situation where we need to work with the point numbers, that is the decimal numbers. For example, 5.2 or 7.3. These are some fractional numbers. There are multiple data types in C sharp programming language to handle these point numbers. Let's understand all of them one by one. To handle the decimal points in C sharp programming language, we have three data types. First is float, second is decimal, and third is double. We will learn everything about them in this video. So I have created this very basic console application and there is nothing in this application. This is the plain console application. As I have told, there are three data types. First is this float. Let's comment it. Second is double. And third is the decimal so let's comment all of them one by one because we need to learn all about them okay so basically these three types are available and just like we were having different types in integer for example sort byte integers long etc similarly here as well we have three types and the difference is in their memory size and the maximum value and the minimum value over here i have written some values like I want to find out what is the size of this float data type. What is the maximum value of this float data type? Again, the minimum value of this float data type. Similarly, I have also written some code for this double type. Double, maximum value, minimum value, and for decimal as well, what is the default size? What is the size in memory of this type? What is the maximum value? And what is the minimum value? Let's run this application and let's see what is the actual difference. And here is the output. The size of float is 4 bytes. The size of double is 8. And the size of decimal is 16. And if you will notice over here, the float is taking less size. It means the maximum capacity of this float is less as compared to the double. Similarly, the double is having less values as compared to the decimal. It means the capacity of this double is less as compared to the decimal. This is the maximum value of an float. This is the maximum value of the double. Here, if you can notice one thing that we are having something very strange. It is saying 3.40 and at the last we are having E plus 38. Here also we are having E plus 308. It means 10 to the power. So what does it mean? It means 3.40282.35 multiply 10 to the power 38. Similarly, here as well for the negative number, it is 10 to the power 38. Here, if you will notice, the 10 to the power is 308. It means the double can hold much larger value as compared to the float. And here we are having the decimal. This is the maximum and the minimum value of the decimal. So remember, the main difference in between all of them is in the size, maximum and the minimum values. Now, if you need to work on some small values, then you can choose the float. If you have larger values, then you can go with the double. And if you have, again, some very large value, then you can go with the decimals let's try all of them one by one in this application so here i want to declare a couple of variables first i'm writing float and here i'm writing var1 and here i can define some values like 10.2 here you will notice something very strange that it is giving me an error let's ignore the error for now and let's define the values for the double and the decimal as well so here i'm writing first for double And again here I'm writing 10.2 and for the decimal as well I will also write 10.3 10.2 if you will notice something very strange over here it is saying some errors for this float and for the decimal but not for double it means whatever decimal values we are writing over here by default it is double if I want to write some values for the float and decimal then we need to do something else over here and it is very interesting if you need to assign some values to the float, then you have to write F keyword over here, just like this. You can use the small letter or you can also use the capital letter. Both of them will work. Similarly, for the decimal as well, you have to define one character, which is M. You can have a small M or you can also have the capital M over here. This is how you can define some values of this float, double and decimal. And remember, this is very important concept because in interview, you can get a question like we are having a method and that method is expecting a decimal value or a float value. How will you pass a value to that particular method? And the answer is you need to suffix the value by using either F or the M based on the type. You do not have to write anything for the 
double data type okay let's display the values on the console screen like this and here i will choose the var2 and here i will go with the var3 these are some strange names of my variables like this so let's just run this application so we are having 10.2 10.2 and 10.2 the console dot right line is working fine let's just comment this entire code for a while because we are working on this concept and i do not want to confuse the values with all of them okay do you remember the maximum and minimum values from this float double and decimal where we were having e plus some values we can also apply same logic over here so let's assume we are having this where one and in this where one if i'm having something like 1.7 e then i'm writing plus and two like this see we are getting the error again how can we fix this we can use the f keyword over here to fix it it is working fine now let's run this application and let's see what is the output the output this time you will see we are having 170 why we are having 1.7 and then we are multiplying it with 10 to the power 2 which is 100 so it means 1.70 is the output this is how you can work with the float double and decimal let's understand one more very important concept do you know we can define all our data types by using the where keyword although we will learn so many things about the where keyword in upcoming video but because this is very interesting so here i'm writing it so let's define only where and let's say it is my variable or you can give any meaningful name and here on the right hand side you can assign any value and based on the value that you will write over here the type of this variable will be declared automatically so it means if i'm writing true then it will be boolean see it is boolean if i'm having 10 you can see it is integer if i'm having 10.2 then you can see it is double by default so if you are declaring your variables by using this where keyword then by default it is going to work with the double data type if you want to work with the float which is having less memory then you have to suffix it with the letter f and now the type is float this is how you can work with the decimal values in c sharp application thank you for watching have a great day